Once that's done and it says completed, you can now move on to the next step. We're going to click next. Uh, one more note, actually, that I will make very quickly is sometimes the dependency check will come back uh, with an error that says you are not running the correct version of Magento. It says it in slightly more cryptic language than that, but that is ultimately the message. Unfortunately, on the Magento marketplace, even when you filter down to extensions or themes that are compatible with your version of Magento, sometimes some of those do slip through the cracks and the marketplace will say that this is compatible with your installation of Magento, but once it gets down to it, it turns out that it's not. Don't be startled if that happens. Sometimes that just happens. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your installation. It just means things on the Magento marketplace were not assigned to their appropriate filters. So once this is done, click next. And then Magento is going to make a backup of your code, your media, which is images and things like that, and your database so that it can roll back just in case something goes wrong with the extension installation process. So we're going to click create backup and let that do its work for a minute. And once that's done creating the backup, it'll give you this message telling you where the backup files are located on your server in case you need to download them and restore your site manually. Usually if something goes wrong during the extension or theme installation process, it'll give you the option to roll back automatically. You essentially click a button that says roll back and it fixes everything for you using these files. But if for whatever reason you can't do that, we see here at our root directory slash var slash backups slash something, some number, then we have this file, the system code, the system media, and the database. So we have everything needed to restore our site to its previous state in case something catastrophic happens. So once that's done, we'll click next. And now we're to the part where Magento is actually going to go through the installation process itself. Do note, it does take your store offline to do this. Ideally, you're doing this on a development environment and not on a live production site. But whatever the case may be, it is going to take your site offline during this process to install the extension. We're going to click install. And while that's installing, you'll, you'll see a screen that looks like this for a while and you might see some messages up here. It may not look like anything's happening, but it is going through the installation process. While that's installing, I want to show you one more thing back in our file system. Over here, if we go back to our root directory, which for me is slash HTML, for many people it might be slash public underscore HTML. If we look in this var directory, let's open that. At this point in the process, you'll see a file called dot maintenance dot flag. Now, if your file system is not showing hidden files, then you won't see this because anything that starts with a dot is a hidden file. So you will only see this if you're allowed to see hidden files. There should be settings somewhere. And this is, again, this is going to depend on your web host environment. Somewhere you'll have settings to turn on invisible files or hidden files rather. And this file is what makes the site essentially go offline. So if something happens during this installation process, or say you accidentally close the window and you can't get back to your website because every time you do it says the site is down for maintenance or the site is offline or something along those lines, the way to get around that and to get back into your website is to delete this .maintenance.flag file. That's all you have to do. You just delete it outright and you'll be able to access the back end of your site once again. That's just something to keep in mind if you do run into that problem. We'll see that our installation is still running, so we'll let that finish. All right, now eventually you may come to a page that looks like this, internal server error. Don't freak out if you see this. Notice up here, if your path looks like this and you see updater dash success at the end, that's usually a good sign. If you see this, go ahead and let's go up to the address bar, keep the URL as it is and press enter to go directly to that URL once again. And you'll see this message now, usually it will say, you installed, and it'll tell you the extensions you installed. In my case, the only reason I don't see that is because I already looked at this page a second ago before I began this recording once again. So yours will say something along the lines of, you installed EU cookie compliance and you installed that other core extension. Success is the key thing here. So then we click back to set up tool. And in fact, we can just go straight back to the admin portion of our website. 
There's nothing else that we need to do installation wise for our extension. We do need to know how to access this extension on the back end of our website now because right now it's going to be mixed in with all of the stuff that comes with Magento. In most cases, if you go back to the extensions page on the Magento Marketplace, and if you scroll down a bit, you'll see an overview, a description of what the extension does, some reviews, release notes, etc. Under the overview tab, you may see this documentation user guides. I'm not going to pull this up and go through it here, but this will tell you again for most extensions where to access that extension's settings on the back end of your website. So now that we have this installed on our site, I know just because I've already looked it up that we can go to stores and configuration. And you should notice something looks a little bit different here right now. Above general, we have Hello Brave. And this has all of the settings related to the EU cookie compliance extension. We can disable it outright if we want. Of course, probably don't want to do that if we went through the trouble of installing it in the first place. And we can go through all of the rest of the configuration, which we're not going to do right now. This isn't a tutorial on this particular extension. I'm just trying to show you how to install themes and extensions in general. Obviously, once you get everything the way you want it, you'll click Save Config. So as we've seen, the process of getting an extension or a theme and tying it to your site, then going through the installation process can be a bit involved. But if you pay attention to all of the error messages that you get along the way, assuming you do get some error messages, and especially if you're with a Magento focused web host, you should be able to work through everything. And then the last thing we're going to do, let's not forget to go back to our file system. And we need to remove those extra write permissions that we applied during the extension installation process. So for me, I need to page over. What we're looking for is this app directory. And we'll go to Etsy first. And here is env.php. We'll remove the write permissions for the group. Then back up. Go to design front end and let's remove the group write permissions from Magento. And I should note that the write permission settings requirements for those are going to be different from server to server depending on your setup. In some cases, you might be safe leaving these. In some cases, you may not have been ever prompted to change them in the first place. After doing this, we're going to go back to admin Magento, by the way, and change that one as well. After doing this, if you do come across any errors that say that Magento needs write permissions for this or that directory or file, just go back in and add those permissions as needed.